All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, pretty exciting stuff. We've got midday, middle of summer, down the coast, got the land of blue and gold. So we've got beautiful golden paddocks, and turquoises and blue water, fantastic stuff. Pretty excited because I haven't been down the coast for a while, and uh, I just love painting it. Anyway, so what I've got here, as usual, I'm on a Belgian linen, which has got three, three sorry, clear coats on it. So it looks like it's a clear raw linen, but it's actually got a protective primer to stop the paint soaking in. I've got a nice, beautiful headland. We're actually on an island, Kangaroo Island. Beautiful sunny day, summer. Can't really ask for more. And uh, I feel like I've got a pretty good composition here too, because I'm up on one of the farms, up on the private property here, and got a great view overlooking Pennyshaw. So, Penny Shaw is where the ferry's coming over. You, could probably, you might be able to see it in the distance now. We've got the ferry coming from the mainland. So we've got the mainland off in the distance behind the main headland that I'm painting. I had the mainland over there. And then we've got Penny Shaw itself, which is where that ferry's headed now. And that'll be jutting out on that headland. So this will be a nice detailed area of buildings and township which you haven't seen me do much of so I've done plenty in the past but uh, that was before I was a youtuber and uh, so now it'll be interesting to watch that and what I how do I handle that sort of technique anyway so yeah we've got a foreground lead in I've just put in the darks and I've composed the picture now just so I know what I'm doing I just wanted to warm up a little bit so I feel like I know what I've got now I feel like I've got a nice composition leading in I'm going to have the beautiful turquoise and blue waters in here leading out to the township and then the mainland in the distance. All right, now let's get into the biggest differences between what we're looking at here and what we're looking at there. All right, let's do it. All right. I reckon now the biggest difference would be the fact that that water is a beautiful turquoise colour. So, Viridian green, a little bit of phthalo blue maybe, and some white. It'll make a real stinging bright colour. A little bit more of blue in that. What colour we got today yet? A bit more blue with it. So that's your Viridian green and phthalo blue mainly, with a bit of white. Let's just have a look what colour we've got here. I'll just drop some in here. That's not bad. It is an intense colour and that's what I'm after. It's all about the intense, beautiful turquoise water that Kangaroo Island is renowned for. It's unbelievably... In summer it seems like it's stronger, like it's unbelievable how I've just just add a little bit more Viridian green in here as the water shallows, but it's unbelievable how turquoise the water gets in the middle of the day. It's just breathtaking. So we'll just pop some of that in now because that's the keynote of this subject. Bits here and there. Drop into a nice turquoise bay there, I reckon. Drop a few out around here. Okay, we've got that in. Right, now after doing that, we need to go to the fact that there's some weed and stuff in the water just out from that turquoise. So that's more of a ultramarine blue and magenta colour. So we'll just check out what we've got there. Ultramarine blue and magenta. Start popping a bit of that in. And of course white's in that mix. There we go, so we'll put that down. A little bit more blue, just to intensify the, the beautiful Australian midday light, the land of blue and gold. There we go, that goes in. So I'm using a palette knife today. Uh, may use a bit of brush later on, why not? Who knows? I used to use a lot of brush with palette knife. You've all seen me use palette knife 100%. But you never know, just for a bit of fun, I may get the brush out as well. So we just put some beautiful deep tones down in here. 
really give the feeling of that, that midday light. A little bit more of the turquoise thrown in, wouldn't hurt anyone. Just do some little marks to help blend it all in. Look at that. Look at that. Good stuff. Right, more blue, more magenta. It actually greys a little bit as it recedes off. There is a bit of a coastal haze, which is quite common on the coast. So in the outback, you get a very clean light on a full sunny day like this closer to the coast you're quite often going to of course get that coastal haze so there's a bit of that around today particularly around where the mainland's meeting the uh, horizon there that is a fantastic subject so I'll just build up quite a bit of darkness in here just to help create drama so when I want to use do the accents later on I've got a big tonal range to work with Pull that in. Mixed a little bit more turquoise because I'm coming up near the headland here. So we've got that kind of splashes of green and whatever in there. It's always a blend when you're painting these subjects. A blend of uh, different colours in the water just intermixing subtle tonal changes. There we go. Okay, now we'll keep fading up here. Lighten the tone with a bit more white maybe as it goes up. There's a bit more white in that mix to, to lighten it and a bit more magenta with the viridians which also grays the water a bit and helps it recede. A bit more blue, I'm just mixing on the fly here so just lighten that tone a little bit with a bit of white. Pull down, get that beautiful dolphin head, that headland of Penny Shore looks very much like the head of a dolphin. getting there. Now a lot of the paintings I've been doing recently on the river are about, well foreground mainly, like the painting's very much about all the subjects are close because you're right on the river, you're very close to everything. Whereas this painting, there's a lot of foreground but it's receding into distance. So this painting is very much about near to far. And I haven't done that for a while and I, I really do love doing that. I haven't, I, you know, it's one thing that as a tonal artist, tonal and colorist, so it's fun to play with that stuff. You get that atmospheric distance. So what I've just done then is use ultramarine blue and magenta. Trying to create a bit of a coastal haze here. I might throw a bit burnt sienna to grey it. I'm just getting the coastal haze right on the horizon now. So it's gonna be a neutral color. So we'll start off with blue. But then I'll throw some other colours up, burn siennas and magentas and all that, and I'll grey that blue off, that ultramarine blue right off. A bit more white to lighten it, a bit more brown to grey it, burn sienna. Yeah, it's going to have to go fairly grey. That's a very grey tone out there today on the horizon. Quickly splash that in and lighten it's a lighter tone too so I add a bit more white just mix a bit quicker so that doesn't take too long <laughs> too busy yep jabbering on now I'm not quite touching that horizon that horizon line I actually when I was blocking in I just quickly threw a tape I measured a tape across there put a bit of tape like I've got on the edges here across there so I know I've got a perfectly level horizon 
and that's exactly what I want on a painting like this. You don't want to finish the painting and get home and go, I like the painting, but I'm feeling like it's on a bit of a weird angle. And there's nothing you can do about it then, unless you want to completely rework the painting. You get the horizon line wrong, and then it haunts you for the rest of the painting's life. <laughs> Get it right at the start, which is quite an easy thing to do, just measure it and put a tape across. You eliminate a lot of trouble then, don't you? Alright. Change tacks. Put a bit of phthalo blue and yellow ochres and burnt siennas. I'm trying to get the colour of the sky now. That was the atmospheric haze. Let's just mix up that, it's quite green. We're back off on the green, it's a bit too green there. So I'll use a bit more blue and white to lighten it. We were painting that atmospheric haze, but now we want to paint the actual sky itself, which needs a bit more yellow ochre. There's a lot of uh, warm tones right down low on the sky there, let's see. That's not too far off, a bit more yellow ochre I reckon. Just want to really make it a warm sunlit colour, even though it's supposed to be a blue sky, which it will be. Putting these warmer tones in initially will really help. And as it gets up higher in the horizon, in the heavens, it'll get more of those straight blues. But for now, no. Now that tape I've got on the edges I'll peel off later, it's just a bit of a border I've put up. And uh, that'll come off later, and I'll we'll have nice, neat edges. So when it's sitting on the wall at home, it'll look great. All right, so now I've gone a bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, really getting those ochre colours. Really going for those ochre colours. There's a lot of ochre in the sky down low, as I was saying. So Let's see what we've got here. More ochre. Let me slap that paint on, get a nice juicy, juicy, thick, buttery, oily effect as it goes up. Using little jabby marks to give the feeling of broken colour and the illusion of light. Well, that's all very well and good, so I'm going up a level now. So I'm going for more of the blues and a bit less of the ochres. And we're going through that white, so I might have to get more out in a minute, but that's all right. I've got those massive tins. That's a litre tin. You can actually buy five litres if you're really keen. All right, so you can see that's more of a clean blue, less of the atmospheric ochres. Bung that in. Blend it. Blend it within reason. Plenty of paint on. It's all about paint, isn't it, when you're painting with these techniques. I'm painting tonal, tonal picture, or realism in a tonal way, in colour. But it's still all about paint, isn't it? It's all about the way you've applied the paint that really can create an interesting effect. So I've gone a little bit more blue, a little bit less of the greens and less of the ochres. So a much cleaner, cleaner blue now. That's all down low, that horizon, that horizon haze. Now we're getting more up into the blue heaven, so it becomes cleaner and cleaner as it goes. And also warmer and warmer, we're getting more red and less of the ochres. And so I'm using the ultramarine blue, which has got a bit of red in it. Just go a bit white, we don't want to light, don't want to go too dark. So there we go. Keep on blending, blending, blending. Right, just a tiny bit more of that and we'll be up there at the top. What a fantastic day. Well, we're getting a little bit of cloud just hitting the top just above the mainland too, which is beautiful. Quite often the uh, 
you get a few thunderheads develop over the headland there, the mainland. It's like the coastal air runs along. Once it hits the mainland, it seems to build up over the mainland and you're able to get thunderstorms develop there through the day. Or at least beautiful clouds, thunderhead clouds anyway, at the very least. Alright, so those thunderheads are developing above the mainland. While they're doing that, I'll just drop the top of the mainland in there so we can see where it is. Might just grey it off a little bit. Burn sienas and magentas and whatever mixed in with the blue. It's quite greyed off today, like I was saying, there's a coastal haze. Yeah, that's good. That's the correct colour but it's the wrong tone, it's a little bit dark so I'll just lighten the tone a bit which will help send it right off into the mysterious distance what a beautiful day, I know I keep saying it, that's because I keep thinking it. Now, obviously the biggest difference will be getting all this stuff in, the grass and the trees and whatever. I've got a few dark tones. Actually, while we're on those dark tones, I might just pick out the headland of Panishaw itself again with a bit of ultramarine blue and magenta. Just got a little bit lost in the whole application of the turquoise water. So we'll just pick that out again. A few of the darker tones thrown in before I put the lighter tones. There we go, look at that. Right, so where's that headland? There's another headland jutting just here, so I'll work with that. Just there, yet. Yeah. Right, that should do. Okay, so that's good. Now let's get some light tones. We've done plenty of that. Now I'll just move these colours over here out of the way and I might grab them later on, but for now, just want to keep my area clean that I'm working on because instead of going for those cool blues and greens, I'm going for the beautiful land of blue and gold and we're, a lot, we're getting into the gold section now. So it's going to be tons of yellow ochre Tons of white because it's a very full lit landscape. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white. Let's have a look at that. See what we got. Let's just chunk, chunk some on. A little bit more yellow ochre. And the fun is here, when you're painting near to far, which I'm doing now, I love to play with tons of paint. Tons of paint in the foreground. I just love to really lick it on thick and that really contrasts the thinner distance. So we just pop that in with tons of jabby marks to give the feeling of detail. Just want to key that down a bit. I don't want my accents over there. There's a bit too much white in that. Yeah, real thick. 
thick paint chunked on any which way you want. A little bit of Viridian green and burnt sienna. I notice there's a few little bushes popping their heads up here and there. Just flick a little bit of that in. Chunk, 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 chunky style. Put it on, chunky, why not? Like beautiful stuff, look at that. Real thick in the foreground. I love playing with thick grasses in the foreground. It's just so much fun. Put that paint on. Okay, now we're going back into here. A little bit more magenta with those mixes. Just to knock it back a tad because we're into the next headland which is here and it's keyed down a bit. Just receding off into the distance that little bit. I'm trying to work out where I'm going to put that headland. Just everything's suggested at the moment, so because it's only suggested, you suggest stuff at first and then you work out exactly what you want as you go. A little bit of that there. Keep back even more with the blues and magentas. Even though it's all, the grass is all the same colour when you're up close, it's all straw colour. As you go back, the atmosphere starts to take over. It starts to change it. So even though I'm still working with the same colours in theory, the atmosphere has taken over. As you can see, and uh, sent it off into the distance. All right, so we've got those ochres in. Now, it's time to get, I've got the shadow tones of all the trees. It's obviously time to get some of the light sources of trees. So here we go again, yellow ochre and burnt sienna, which I use a lot of, Viridian green. More burnt sienna. What have we got today here? Yeah. Just let's have a look. It's very lightly touched. Letting the underpainting show through. I'm just going to need a little bit more Viridian green. Tiny bit stingy on the green. I thought because it's a uh, summer landscape there wouldn't be much green, but all that turquoise water has chewed up my green, so of course we. Need plenty of green. I've got it in the tube on that one, so a little bit of that thrown into the brew. I'll put a bit of cat orange just to help warm it up a bit. Let's have a look. Really throw it on loose. Thick, spontaneous. varies it's a little bit more of that green color on this side so I'll do that. Variety is the spice of life. Okay now everything's always changing and whatever and just over here a little bit further into the landscape there's a little bit more of a magenta look about it down here. The she oaks are growing and they seem to have more of that colour. A little bit more of a keyed down colour. Ok, 
Okay. Throwing a few greys too in the mix because uh, of course you always get grey from the dead foliage and stuff on the trees or even the li living foliage for that matter. It's a bit of a darker tone here so I'm going a bit a bit more burnt sienna thrown into that. Just feeling it as we go. What have we got here? I'll just stand back and have a look all I've got, eh? That's all good. Now, I can see that cloud's quite insistent in the distance there, that little cloud. It's not going to develop into a thunderhead today, I would imagine. But at the same time, they build up over there, so it's a good spot. So it's a good location in the composition, so I might drop some in. I'll just get a bit of white, a little bit of cat orange in it, a little bit of yellow ochre. Bit of yellow ochre as well. Alright, straight away I can see it needs a little bit more colour in it, less white. I've actually found a bit of burnt sea anywhere, believe it or not. It's good, but it needs more yellow ochre, you just got to feel it as you go. That's about right, yeah. Let's have a look at that. spread it around a bit because it'll build up through the day. By the time I finish the painting I imagine there'll be a little bit more of it and it helps not have it jump too much by itself. It gives it, blends it in if you just add a little bit more and, and helps the painting accept it. If it's just one blob it'll stand out a little bit too strong and it's not the accent but it is to lead your eyes in. Foreground, middle ground, distance, off to the clouds. So that's the concept there. lightly pull through this just to soften the edges of where the foliage is meeting the water and it's just clean that up a bit by pulling through and softening just makes it more convincing you get that beautiful blend between the thick chunky and then where the edges meet, it just makes it more convincing that it's not like stick on it, it's more 3D. Pull through like so. So 
blending and just feeling the composition. Softening and bringing some grasses up. It's all about feel with this sort of style. I just feel like I need to soften this area. So I'll pull through like that. Penny sure itself. Just pull it through a little bit. Very much about feel this style and this stage of the painting. Because you've already got the colours and tones in. Oops, that's the wrong colour. You've already got everything in. But you just want to make it blend now. You've got the colours and tones and harmony. Now let's just get it all to work together as one and harmonise. Hard and soft, lost and found. Well, right, well, there's quite a lot of the landscape in now, but those buildings are a beautiful highlight. So I'm just going to get some pure white. May mix a few other colours too, but for now we'll just get some pure white and we'll just pick out a few of the major buildings. With a palette knife on edge, quite a small knife, unfortunately. <laughs> Sooner or later I had to get a small knife out, I guess. But that'll really help depict the township give the illusion of detail now I might just put a few red highlights too so I'll go up to some cad red and white just pick out a few roofs roofs rooftops and that'll really make it pop with that complementary colour of the turquoise flick a few in like so here and there. A bit more pure white again. It's here and there. A little bit of beach there too, so I'll put that in. Let's just have a look what we got. Picking out a few buildings that go up a size, your little ripper. Up a size in palette knife. As the buildings get closer we can we can do that of course. Now with the uh, underside of a clean knife you can pick up like so, get the roof, real clean rooftop. It's just like you get a clean knife, run underneath. Really clean up those rooftops. Oh, let's have a look at that, eh? All right, well, seriously getting a lot of stuff done now. I reckon the biggest thing we can do now is that tape was forming a purpose earlier on. And now I think it's time to get it off so we can finish the painting. It'll really change the look of the painting once I start ripping that tape off. And so I'm getting closer to the finished stage and I feel like the only way to keep on progressing instead of going the wrong way is to start getting that tape off. So let's do that. Could be a bit tricky here because I've got these clamps in amongst it all, but we'll give it a go, see what we can do. It really will start to change the look of the whole painting. There we go. 
this is always the fun part. Hopefully I won't get in too much of a mess. Right, so we've got that. That one can go on there. Oh, you ripper, that worked out well, yes. Just don't want it. I would hope those two linked up, and they have. Okay. Now we'll just get around this clamp if we can. Take that off. Not that easy to get that off there. We'll deal with that later on. That's the majority of it gone. It's a quick bin run. Now that looks good. What I'm gonna do is get a brush out. I thought about it and I thought, yeah, we'll get a brush out now. I just wanna send that, that mainland off a little and I feel like a brush just softening, just pulling a dry brush across with confidence. It's a great way to just send it off on its journey. Just pull through, it really softens it. So, just a couple of other places. Don't want to get too carried away with that technique, but it does. I will now add a little bit more here because of what I've done is I've introduced a brush, so I feel like now I just need to continue and stick a little bit more brush so those little brush marks that are there are not the only ones because you don't want it to just stand out. You want, if you started using brush, well, just make it a picture about brush and knife. We'll just clean this off completely. Hang on, I might just do a bin run and grab this. Very clean. Soften that water, just pull through. Because what I'm trying to do is get the biggest contrast I can between the chunkiness of the land and the softness and dreaminess of that turquoise water. I feel like a brush is just taking me to that new level. So I haven't actually painted with a brush, I'm just smearing with a brush, I guess you could say. All right, now that's going well. I might just get some strong accents and just Just drop a little bit of brightness in here and there to help sting it up against that blue turquoise water. It'll really help it jump then. Just got to feel it as you go. Just not too much, but a little bit. Some cad red and white. Pick out a couple more rooftops. Well, pretty happy with what's going on now. Obviously got the big impression. Hang on, we'll just get this little one out. A little bit of a dark tone is not necessary there. That's a sky, that should be light. Okay, now I'm pretty happy with what's going on here. I've really got a big abstraction in the foreground with tons of chunky, chunky paint that I was talking about earlier. The distance here, Penny Shore itself, I've really put some refinement in and some illusion of detail with fine lines with the palette knife. 
and uh, added a bit of boat activity, got the ferry, the KI ferry, which is leaving now, just chuffing back off to the mainland, a few thunderheads developing over the mainland. But on the whole, I feel like I've got the, the near to far that I was after. This, the, painting, the concept of this painting was about the beautiful turquoise waters, tranquil, contrasting the near and far. So you've got a lot of distance in the painting and also a beautiful summer's day on Kangaroo Island in the land of blue and gold. All right, well, what we'll do is we'll get that camera off, have a closer look and see what you guys think. Okay, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of any of these videos as I upload them. And if you like the video, like the video, forward it on to all your mates and just spread the good word in general. All right, well, thanks again for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.